Hello. Recently, I got more and more interested in developing React Native applications using Reason. Uh, Reason is a new dialect for Camel, a part of programming language particularly known for its strong type system. Reason gives the benefits of using this powerful programming language uh, with a syntax that is easily understandable and easy to write for JavaScript developers. I think there's a lot of benefits in writing React Native applications using Reason. Uh, I like the experience of it, where instead of writing the code and switching to the simulator to check if it works, just compile it to us straight away of any warnings and errors. Uh, but for from business perspective, the most important advantage is probably the correctness guarantees. Of course. Uh, the compiler is not going to guarantee that your application is completely free of bugs, but it will help you protect yourself from the most common programming errors. In this episode of BrainPix, uh, I want to show you how a daily flow of work with Reason could look like. Uh, I will guide you through the process of de developing a small feature in a React Native application written in Reason. Uh, to show you how it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. Enjoy! So what, what we have here is a sample application that's obviously written in Reason and React Native, because that's what we're going to talk about. And it's a guide to Barcelona. Our company is from Barcelona, so it and we get a lot of questions. There's like a lot of tourists coming to the city, and we decided it makes sense to make a simple app for it instead of answering the same questions all over again. Anyway, so what it does, it's just like a sim simple list of different places where you can go. Like there's like a Peruvian restaurant where you can uh, where you can eat wonderful ceviche. Uh, like there's a bunch of other things, uh, yeah. Labyrinth which is like not that popular, so it's worth to to check out. Um, but what this application it's missing? Well, it's missing a lot of things because it's super simple. But what bothers me most at this current stage is that to find anything, I have to scroll through through the whole list. There's no like categories because. There, usually there's like in the morning when you full of energy and want to see something, you just want to look through the tourist attractions. And then when there's like lunchtime, you just want to go through the restaurants to figure out where to go for lunch. So let's add a simple filter on the top that uh, allows us to filter this list through different categories of those recommendations. So let's dive into the code. Here's a recommendation list component, which is in charge of rendering this list of recommendations. We have some styling. This component is stateless component, which means it's like a React pure component where it's basically what we see. It's a pure function of the, the properties. And there is no internal state that this component holds. So there is uh, there is the random function which gets some recommendations. Currently, it just like gets all of them. And then it uses map to change the recommendations into a React component. It's a recommendation item. This is what is displayed on the, on the screen, like as a list element. And then it's just a scroll view that contains all those recommendations. So the way we would handle it would be to create some kind of local state that saves the information about what kind of filter we're using to filter out those recommendations. And then when, and we would have two places where you can tap and switch those categories. And this would update the filter information in the local state and will trigger a re-render and we'll see those change the recommendations. Let's do just that. In recent React, this means that our component is not going to be a stateless component anymore. What we'll have uh, instead is called the reducer component. The name reducer suggests some kind of like Redux kind of state flow, uh, which is which is true because 
uh, reducer component feels like it has some kind of mini redux built inside. It's not as simple as uh, with normal React we would use. Just set state wherever we want and stuff would happen. In region React, this concept of a local state is much more elaborate and much more structured, which personally I like because I get a lot of benefits that Redux would give me. I deal with actions. The state changes in only one place, which is the reducer function. Everything is clear what's going on. It's uh, The data flow is simple. And, but I don't get the disadvantages of Redux would be like holding everything in a global state and uh, having all those performance related problems around that because it is still like an internal thing inside the component. So like nothing outside knows about it, which makes it, in my opinion, really, really cool middle ground. If we change it to reducer component and we save the file, we get an error uh, because it tells us this seems to like you call it a reducer component, but you don't have a reducer function. And the reducer function takes an action that you dispatched and the current state and updates the state accordingly, according to the information from this action. So, but to be able to write, write this function, we have to first figure out what state in our case. As we talked before, the only thing we care about that we want to store inside this local component state is the information about the filter for filtering categories. And this is going to be a category filter. It's the type that I had defined before. Basically what it is, uh, it's a variant. It's either contains all the categories or a particular one. Here we have this funny statement, category, category, category. But this means uh, this is a name that we're going to use to tell it that like it either contains a category or all the categories. And this is a, the type of a variable that's like inside and this category stands for the namespace where we can find the type and it's the actual actual type looks a bit complicated because naming is complicated one of the three most difficult things in computer science uh, but it's gonna come become clear a bit uh, when we start writing the example so we have the state now we should define what's the what's an action so let's make it also a variant one of the things that can happen is we set a particular category for the filter. We name the function, the action set category, and it's going to take a, a parameter that, that is a, of the type category. And the other possible action is we reset the categories in the filter. So we can do like reset filter. And the reset filter, of course, doesn't take any variable, any, any parameter. And the reset filter, obviously, it just resets whatever it is. It doesn't, you don't have to pass there anything. The next step would be to set the initial state. And the initial state, you said like in the normal React way, the component will have function initial state that gets called when it's instantiated and doesn't take any arguments and it just returns what the initial state is going to be. In our case, it's a filter that shows uh, all, all categories. And now we're getting to the meat of all this like state management. So we define our reducer component. As I said, it takes an action in the state. And what it does actually, it depends on the action. So it's a typical thing in any reducer, you have to figure out what happens on different actions. In our case, it's, it's really simple. So if the action is set category and, and it comes with some kind of variety, like uh, with some kind of category we'd like to set, here we define that we're going to refer to this variable as category. Uh, then we would like to update the local state to, to have this um, information reflected in the filter, the current filter. So, well, to update the local state, we don't use set state as we would do in React, but we we use the update function, and there we just pass the what we would like to update. So in our case, the filter is gonna be 
uh, a particular category. We have to tell it that it's a category, it's not all, and a pr what particular category is inside, we tell it like this. So, this is cool. Oh. Uh, we can save it. And now we have a simple reducer to switch categories. However, the compiler tells us something is wrong. So it tells us, uh, you forgot to handle a possible value because we're doing a switch over an action and it knows that the action can, is a variant get, that can have two different values. It's a reset category, which we're handling, or a reset filter, which we're not handling, but we should. So let's, let's handle the reset filters as well. And in this case, we're gonna do uh, an update and the filter is gonna be all. And now the last warning is that we're not using the variable called state. We're overwriting what's ever in the states. We don't rely on what's, what's there, so we don't care. We can just mark it uh, as, an, as a parameter that we're not using for anything. Now we have a reducer and we have some kind of like data management system, but we're not using it for anything. The first thing we, we should do is to actually use this filter to get different recommendations in our render function. Before, this was a stateless component, so we weren't using self for anything. Now it's time to do it. And self has a particular structure that we know we can, so we can use the structuring to get the details. For example, we're gonna need the state. And we're gonna use it to get the current filter and this is basically a filter that's in the state. We can use this current filter to filter the recommendations. So we can just pass it here. And now we have, uh, we would display only recommendations that belong to a particular category. However, we still don't have a way for the user to switch between the categories. So as, as I said, we wanted to have some kind of top bar with different buttons and you, when you tap them, you switch between different categories or all the recommendations. So to visually have place for this uh, buttons, I have a view that styled leave space for it. Inside every button would be represented by the component called category, which I prepared before. Here we, uh, we have a compiler error because I didn't pass any properties there. And I, I did on purpose because I don't remember what are the different properties that it takes. So I can just use the ID to help me figure it out. So uh, this call is missing arguments of type filter, which I know it's a filter, and a current filter. This means that uh, a filter is information what kind of filter this button is going to represent. The current filter tells it what kind of filter is currently active, so the button can figure figure out whether to show an active state or, or a normal state. And there is also an onChange parameter that takes a function what should happen when we uh, when we click the button actually, because we would like to the filter to change. Let's start with a simple case and to represent the the filter of all categories. Uh, the current filter is stored in our current filter variable. You can notice that when I save it, it just shorthands current filter equals current filter into just one simple current filter. It's because the prop name and the variable that we store the value in is the same, so we can just uh, shorten it like this, uh, the syntax sugar. And what we need to also pass is the onChange method. And this is gonna be a bit tricky. This whole way of updating state is uh, it's about dispatching actions and using reducer to handle them. So what we would like to this button to do is to dispatch an action. And uh, how do we do it if we don't have any dispatch function? In the component that we can when we, that we destructure in in the render function as a parameter, we can also get a reduce function out of it. That this. Uh, this is a function that we can use to, to dispatch actions. So we can call it here and as a parameter it will take a function that will generate an action that we want to dispatch. Basically it would be a function that takes some event 
and returns an action. In our case, the action, will, because we're talking about the filter that's going to display all categories, so the, the action that we want to return is reset filter. Now when we save it, it's actually this event, we're not using it for anything, so we can mark it as unused. And we have one button that resets the filter. So we need three more because we actually have in this app three different categories of recommendations. So uh, let's take a look at the first one of them. So let's handle stuff that we eat first. In this case, we set a filter that's, that's going to represent the eat filter. And on change, instead of returning reset filter, it should return set category. And the category that uh, is going to be returned is going to be uh, eat. That's an error because the filter is not uh, just eat. Because when we look back, the filter has a type of, it's either all or a particular category. So we have to tell him it's not all, it's a category and a category and this one in particular. So I have to set that like this. This would be eating and we can easily add filters for something to see, like places to see and things that we could do. It seems like we have all our categories taken care of. Uh, there are no compiler errors, which is good. So let's check how it looks in our app. We'll reload the application. And we see our categories on the top. And indeed, in the beginning, we have all of them. Like we, I see restaurants, I see places to visit. But let's switch just to restaurants, cool. This works. And places to see, yeah. We have our Labyrinth Orta. Sure. I think it looks good. I think it works perfectly. Whenever I write a React Native application in JavaScript or even TypeScript, uh, I spend some time writing code in the IDE. Then I switch to the simulator, take a look, like run the app, figure out what works, what doesn't, try to look, see what's happening, how it works. And then I will come across the red screen of death or because there's a typo and I fix it and like, uh, that's the flow. And here, uh, I don't know if you noticed it while I was typing, but basically we never returned, uh, we never exited the ID. Like we were in the ID the whole time and the feedback loop was really fast. Like we didn't have to see any red screens of death because the compiler was telling us straight away, okay, like this type's on the line, you have a typo here, you have to wrap it or, uh, the, the feedback loop was really, really fast. It keeps us focused on what we're doing. Uh, it lets us find errors faster. And in the end, when we, when we switched to the simulator, like everything worked on the first try. And for me, it's unbelievable coming, <laughs> coming from the world of JavaScript. And, uh, I really enjoyed it. So, so yeah, that's, that's mostly why I'm, I'm so excited about Reason. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you in this short episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and keep watching this space. We have uh, more goodies about Reason and uh, React Native coming, coming up. Uh, in the next episode, we'll probably tackle some, some animations. And so stay tuned, watch this space and happy hacking. See you.